Looking for free games of Webcam Commander? The Telerian Community College Discord's Looking for Games section is 100% free, so you can shuffle up and play in a cool, fun space for those looking for webcam games of Commander, or any Magic the Gathering format for that matter. Just go to discord.gg forward slash Telerian Community College. The Magic the Gathering Commander Precon is without a doubt one of the best and most consistent products ever made. However, prices are often exceeding $45 these days, or in the case of the quote unquote premium Commander Precons like Commander Masters starting in the $80 range, leaving many Magic the Gathering players to ask the question, can't we just build our own precon? Well, yes, you can. With this video, I will show you how to build the newest TCC Commander Precon deck for only $45. And then I'll even guide you through upgrade options if you want to spend a little bit more cash. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but this might be one of the strongest build your own precons that I've ever showcased on this channel. This deck, which costs just $43.52 at the time of recording, punches well above its weight class thanks to an exceptionally low curve, a redundant infinite combo, and, okay, cats out of the bag, a companion. Presenting the Aristocats. Get it? Get it? It's an Aristocrats deck with a cat companion. Ha ha ha. All right, come on, let me have this. Aristocats is a grindy, low-to-the-ground aristocrats deck that gets a ton of mileage out of both its commander and its companion as it churns through cards, controls the board with recursive permanent-based interaction, and blanks your opponent's removal with a variety of protective creatures. Survive long enough to find one of your infinite combo kills, or just make your commander big and unblockable, killing your opponents in just a couple of swings. The commander for Aristocats is Bartolme del Presidio, a 2-1 legendary vampire knight for a white and a black mana. Bartolme has a very simple ability. Sacrifice another creature or artifact to put a plus one, plus one counter on him, and, and, and that's it. There's no once per turn clause here. It's like Wizards of the Coast wants us to do broken things with this distinguished gentleman. The other commander, up uh, sorry, partner, up uh, sorry, companion to the deck is of course Luris of the Dream Den. Luris, for those of you who are fortunate enough to have never had to learn what this nightmare does, is a 3-2 legendary knight. Nightmare Cat for one generic and two Orzov hybrid mana. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent card with mana value two or less from your graveyard. Oh, and she is lifelink because she wouldn't be strong enough without lifelink. Ron Howard narrator, she would still be broken without lifelink. Most importantly, Luris has the companion ability, which these days means you can put her into your hand from the command zone for three generic mana that you spend at sorcery speed. And you'll have to trust me on that one because reading a companion companion card does not explain a companion card, unless it was a reprinted companion card from, like, I think, a Pioneer Challenger deck? So yeah, get that Pioneer Challenger deck for your command. Anyway, her companion restriction is a strenuous one, especially for Commander. Each permanent card in your deck must cost less than three mana. So guess what that means? In this precon, you won't find a Commander Sphere. You won't find a Sun Titan. And amazingly enough, you won't find a Zatalpa Primal Dawn. What? And in EDH, your Commander must meet your companion's deck building restriction as well, which of course Bartleme does. So this is Telarian Commander. Community College's first build your own precon to feature a companion, and what better companion to tag alongside our deck than the best companion, Luris of the Dream Den. Luris is great for this series because, thanks to the fact it's banned in just about every other constructed Magic the Gathering format, the card only costs about 80 cents. So that means she's incredibly affordable, but also, you know, incredibly powerful. That's why she got banned just about everywhere, except I suppose Vintage, where she probably should be. So what cards make up this deck and how does it work? Let's take a look. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor, War Thunder. Have you ever thought to yourself, I love the strategic depth of Magic the Gathering, but I'd really like to be piloting a helicopter or maybe a tank while playing? Well, boy, oh boy, have I got a game for you. War Thunder is the most in-depth vehicle combat game ever made, and it's available for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Pilot over 2,500 vehicles from across history, including tanks, planes, helicopters, 
helicopters, ships, and more. Every model and sound effect is as realistic as possible to immerse you fully in the intense PvP action. This isn't just any old shooter either. War Thunder's industry-leading vehicle damage model accurately reflects damage to individual components such as engines, fuel tanks, weapon systems, and more. And for all you military history buffs out there, the exclusive X-ray view showcases each vehicle and its components with a level of authenticity unmatched by any other game. My favorite part about War Thunder is that it's incredibly detailed and deep, and yet still very accessible. The game is optimized to run well even on lower-end computers or laptops, and you can control any vehicle with either your mouse and keyboard or a controller. No crazy hardware required. Whether you're blasting away in the fast-paced arcade mode or taking the strategic challenge of simulator mode, there's a way to play War Thunder for every gamer. So join a community of over 70 million fans enjoying War Thunder today by downloading for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. And for a limited time, not just new players, but also returning players that haven't played for at least six months, both receive a massive bonus pack just for signing up. Check out my link in the video description or pinned comment and you'll receive an exclusive vehicle decoration. 100 thousand silver lions, seven days of premium account, and much, much more. So thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. Just by looking at these two cards, you probably have a pretty good idea of what kinds of cards you can expect in this deck. Luris and Bartolmi pair incredibly well together, as Bartolmi wants lots of cheap sack fodder, and Luris wants lots of cheap, juicy options to recast from the graveyard. The key win condition in this deck is an infinite combo, a rarity for a budget deck. Cards that come together to form this particular two card combo take up a grand total of $3.22 of the total budget. $2.40 cents of which is claimed by a single card, Metallic Mimic. Metallic Mimic pairs with either Putrid Goblin or Lesser Masticor, two mana persist creatures that become infinite sources of sacrifice fodder when Metallic Mimic is in play, naming either Zombie or Masticor. For redundancy to Metallic Mimic's effect, Aristocats also plays Vizier of Remedies, and Anafenza Kintree Spirit, the latter of which comes with the added bonus of bolstering your army even when you're not comboing. Of course, for this combo deck to work, you need a sacrifice outlet. Only you had one easily accessible. Oh, da doy! This combo allows Bartlemy to gain infinite power and toughness, killing an opponent in a single swing. But if you'd rather not use the combat step, after all, it's a combo kill, not a combat kill, Aristocats can provide. Blood Artist, Zulaport Cutthroat, Cruel Celebrant, Sing Along at Home if you know these, Corpse Knight, and Elis El Kerr. Well, uh, El Elas Ilkor. Elas Ilkor. Yeah, that's it. Elas Ilkor. All give you infinite triggers when you're comboing off. Okay, but what if your opponent has a removal spell? Well, they'll need more than one. Selfless Savior, Benevolent Bodyguard, All Seed of Life's Bounty, and Selfless Spirit all provide some form of protection to one or more of your creatures. This can be used to protect your combo when you're ready to go for it, but even before then, having these critters lying around is incredibly useful for protecting your commanders, especially Especially Luris, since when Luris dies, she can't go back to the command zone like Bartlemy can. What's more, these one of protection effects are actually many ofs, as you can replay them with Luris after they've done their job once. These protective creatures make interacting with Aristocats a nightmare worthy of the Luris creature type line, as your opponents will have to work together to time their removal spells to get past your defenses, especially once you have multiple of these cards in play at once. So what about when you're not comboing? Well, there's still plenty to do in this deck. First, you'll want to get your mana in order. Wayfarer's Bobble and Mycosynth Wellspring help you find lands, and can be recurred to do it again when Luris is in play. Noticing a theme, Scholar of New Horizons, Loyal Warhound, and Knight of the White Orchid can each get you a Plains card as well, then be sacrificed to Bartlemy once they've done their duty. And of course, you can replay them from the graveyard with Luris later if you need to. Scholar is particularly good in this deck, as you can use it to remove a negative one, negative one counter from one of your persist creatures if you happen to have one lying around. As for card draw, we've got a ton of that as well. Modern players will be familiar with the strength of Mishra's Bobble alongside Luris, but this deck also has Chromatic Star, which draws a card when sacrificed by Bartlemy, and both Icker Wellspring 
Conjuring and Mephitic Draft, which draw cards both when they enter the battlefield and when they're sacrificed. Dockside Chef can help you convert spare sack fodder into extra cards as well. For interaction, Aristocats packs a ton. Executioner's Capsule is a recurrable source of targeted creature removal that can be sacrificed to Bartle Me when you don't need it as a removal spell. For pesky commanders, Bounty Agent will keep opposing legends in check. The deck covers artifacts and enchantments quite well, too, thanks to Seal of Cleansing, Cathar Commando, and Leonin Relic Warder. Because of Relic Warder's arcane templating, you can actually permanently exile an artifact or enchantment if you sacrifice the Relic Warder to Bartle Me before the exile clause resolves. Have fun demonstrating that, editors. Did they do it? Great job. The same trick works with Tide Hollow Sculler, permanently exiling a card from your opponent's hand. Worried about a combo opponent? Well, Hope of Giraper does a great job shutting them down for a turn cycle if you can sneak a hit in with its flying body. And it can do this indefinitely if you keep recasting it with Luris. Spirit of the Labyrinth also keeps blue players in check. Keep in mind that if you want to draw some cards yourself, you can just sacrifice your spirit to Bartle Me. If you're staring down the barrel of an opponent's huge army, just sacrifice Kami of False Hope over and over and over again. If an opponent's graveyard is getting too scary, don't worry. Aristocats has three cards that can help out. Remorseful Cleric, Soul Guide Lantern, and Nihil Spell Bomb. The Spell Bomb is particularly excellent, as you can draw a card if you sacrifice it to Bartle Me. Once you've got a large Bartle Me, your opponents will be in jump block mode. Well, Aristocrats has come prepared for that, with both Key to the City and Rogue's Passage. Plus, if you discard a permanent to Key, you can recast it with Luris. Have you had enough value yet? So the issue with companioning Luris is that she doesn't go back to the companion zone after she dies. But fortunately, there are virtually endless ways to get creatures back in Orzhov colors. Unearth and Helping Hand each return Luris for a measly one mana. Savine's Reclamation does the same, and can be flashed back later to do it again. Vat of Rebirth can keep bringing stuff back as long as you keep sacrificing creatures. And of course, if you ever don't need it anymore, you can sack it to Bar me for an additional plus one plus one counter. Null Priest of Oblivion is a sneaky six mana creature in a deck restricted to creatures that cost two mana or less, returning a dead Luris directly to the battlefield as well. The most potent recursive spell in the deck is Rally the Ancestors, which brings every creature in your graveyard back to the battlefield for a single turn. You want to save this one until you have your whole combo in the graveyard, as the creatures that come back will be exiled on the next upkeep and they don't get haste. In addition to Rally, a Aristocats runs Ascend from Avernus, which costs one more mana but keeps the creatures you bring back around for longer than a single turn. Most of the cards in this deck are naturally going to be creatures or artifacts for Bartle Me, but there are a few enchantments as well. Blind Obedience slows down your opponents while you nickel and dime them, while Feast of the Victorious Dead is a great value piece that grows your team every step based on how many creatures you've had die. Hidden Stockpile gives you an additional piece of sack fodder for each turn cycle, and can also help with some card selection if you need it. As far as non-permanents go, there are some that are so good they're still worth playing, even if you can't recur them with Luris. Bone Shards, Sword to Plowshares, and Rite of Oblivion all give you additional targeted removal, as do cards such as Generous Gift, Vindicate, and Damn. The latter is, of course, also a board wipe. This flexibility is extremely valuable in Commander. Speaking of board wipes, Aristocats has a Steer Command, which can destroy destroy a bunch of scary things at once while leaving all your creatures intact if you don't choose creatures with mana value three or less. Finally, cards like Village Rites, Fanatical Offering, and of course Deadly Dispute are some powerful one-off card draws for aristocrat strategies such as ours. As for the lands, well, the typical budget duels are all here. The nice thing about building an Orzov deck is that the duels in this color pair tend to be cheaper, which means it's easy to fit some better duels in under our budget constraints. Strengths. Keep in mind you can get a Sunlit Marsh off of Scholar of New Horizons or Knight of the White Orchard. Also remember that you can sacrifice Goldmire Bridge and Vault of Whispers to Bartle Me since they're artifact lands. Again, this is probably the most powerful deck in our entire series of build your own pre-con decks, though do feel free to browse the rest of that series linked in this video's description and see for yourself. But wait! What if you want to make this deck even stronger? Let's discuss upgrade options for a budget of about $100. What cards can you put in and what would you take out? 
So if you're working with a budget of $100, the first cards I would cut to make room for better additions are some of the weaker creatures like Shire Sheriff, Null Priest of Oblivion, and Remorseful Cleric. I'd also trim some of the less synergistic cards like Bone Shards, Fanatical Offering, and Vat of Rebirth. So what are we putting in with our bigger budget? Well, let's start with Darthy Voidwalker, Darthy Voidwalker, Dothy Voidwalker, Doth Voidwalker, I don't know, Dwarf Voidwalker, one of those, a great graveyard hoser that can cast your opponent's spells for free over and over again thanks to Lurus. Skull Clamp is a great way to churn through cards in your sacrifice strategy, but is a little too expensive for the budget build. Mother of Runes is the premier protection creature in white and is absolutely worth the slot once you're no longer on a budget. Return to the Ranks is a full $9 these days thanks to the new Amalia combo deck in Pioneer. But in the $100 version of Aristocats, the card serves as more Rally the Ancestors redundancy. Animation module goes absolutely berserk with Bartleme, as you can make a servo every time you sacrifice a creature to Bartleme, which you can then sacrifice to Bartleme to make more servos. This means if you have Bartleme and the module in play, for every spare mana available each turn cycle, you can put that many plus one plus one counters on Bartleme. Module was actually in the original pre-con list, but thanks to the printing of crime novelist in Markov's at Karlov Manor, Module spiked in price overnight. The last non-land you'll want to add is Animate Dead, a fantastic standalone card that also gives the deck an additional combo. Cast Animate Dead on a Relic Warder in your graveyard. When Relic Warder enters, have it exile your own Animate Dead. Animate Dead will be exiled, which puts its sacrifice ability on the stack. Relic Warder will die, returning Animate Dead to the battle field, which then targets Relic Warder again. Repeat this loop infinite times, either sacrificing the Relic Warder to Bartleme with Animate Dead, Sack Trigger on the stack, or just let the loop happen without interference if you have a Blood Artist effect in play. This additional infinite combo only costs you about $5.50. Finally, cut some of the weaker dual lands, Silver Quill Campus and Goldmire Bridge, as well as a Swamp and a Plains for upgrades to your mana base that'll include Godless Shrine, Silent Clearing, the Black-White Pathway, which apparently Jesse didn't want to look up the name to when she was writing the script, and Ancient Den. Aristocats is a great deck, but it's not the only Build Your Own Precon that we have done. Take a moment to browse our Build Your Own Precon deck library, linked in this video's description, and then maybe build a deck and get some games in with friends. Or make some new friends on the Tolarian Community College Discord server. If you're looking for free webcam games of Commander, then our Discord server's Looking for Games section is perfect because it's 100% free. So you can shuffle up and play in a cool, fun space for those looking for webcam games of Commander, or those other formats, uh, Popper, Modern, the other one, just go to discord.gg forward slash Tolarian Community College. It's free! Hey, thanks again to this video's sponsor, War Thunder. Use my link in the description or pinned comment to play for free today on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. For a limited time, new and returning players receive a huge bonus pack with premium vehicles, in-game currency, and a whole lot more. So check out War Thunder for free today! Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Unknown Commander. Gavin, I don't know what this is. This is your event. So I design about 60 or so playtest cards for each one of these people have never seen before. What makes a card a playtest card? They look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Rachel Weeks. I'm playing the Colossal Dreadmaw. Hi, my name is George. I am going to be playing Polis the Plane Shifter. I want to have the honor of playing the first playtest card of the game. Right. Wow. It's so fast. Command power plants. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Ross gonna love this one. Oh no. <laughs> so George, 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 okay. look at my thing and I wanna attack you. I'm not scared of the Roman. Oh, you Why should, not? No, you, you should, should be. be. Okay. <laughs> I choose a plane at random. All right. There is Immerstorm. Right yeah! <laughs> Oh, you have seven floating green mana for yeah. that? And you know what I'm gonna do with it, bro? I'm gonna cast a Colossal cast Dreadmoor. Foundation oh. Breaker. Wow. I mean, a Colossal <laughs> Dreadmoor. I'll and say that there's not a lot of balance and rigor put in these unknown playtest <laughs> okay, guys. there's no tutors.